Good afternoon. I want to introduce uh, Jason Pardo, who is the Global VP of Sales and Marketing for Navidad. Um, the, the reason for this introduction is this is an asynchronous introduction to a portion of the presentation on February 6th and 7th by Bobby Nadeau, Paula Villa, Felipe Restrepo, and Samir Jain. Uh, they're all going to be discussing dynamic navigation. Uh, it was my privilege, I've known Jason for years, but it was my privilege to have been involved in the early days of Navidad Endo. And now we are looking at version 3.0, which is the current status of Navidad Endo and certainly the state of the art and what minimally invasive non-surgical and surgical endodontics is going to become. If you look at the upper left part of the screen uh, beside Jason sitting in his chair, that's the Navident baby, uh, the cart, uh, which is the cutest thing going and uh, actually very well respected and given awards for its design. So it, this isn't about me. I want Jason to sort of provide you with a sense of the, uh, what you're going to see. And at least this is the preparatory information uh, in advance of the, uh, in advance of the program. So Jason, they don't want to hear me. They want to hear you and they want to hear all about Navient and what it can do for them. Excellent. Well, thank you, Ken. And, and we really do have to, uh, we owe you a debt of gratitude for pointing us in the right direction and keeping us on track in the early days of this uh, Navident Endo. And it's great to be here with the BID Nexus group and uh, getting ready for this, this lecture on guided endo. And I'm glad that, uh, that Navident is a big part of it. Um, I love uh, all the speakers that you've got on there. Are fantastic. Uh, they're all Navident users or prospective Navident users. <laughs> And uh, so is your audience, I hope. For so, sure. yeah, we've uh, we've experienced a, a real a real groundswell of excitement over Navident for endo procedures. We've been doing implants with Navident for six years uh, since its inception. And uh, in speaking with you and Bobby Nadeau and a few others uh, a few years ago, uh, we started to really explore this in detail. And now, as of now, there have been seven papers published. Uh, most of them since uh, in 2019 and 2020, specifically on endo. There are 30 papers published altogether, uh, seven on endo, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Professor Gambarini and Samir Jain uh, have been instrumental on that with micro, uh, micro endo. So the microsurgery, which you're seeing here uh, with the apical, and as well as uh, calcified canals and minimally invasive access to endo. So. Oh, sorry, I thought you were going to ask a question. No, actually, I was, I'm fascinated as always. I'm looking at the scope of what you're doing and the, the fact that, you know, what you've done with the planning is so cool. Uh, it's a mini implant. And so essentially you're designing a box. That is, if you look at the, the, on the screen on the lower right, that is what you would see on a static guide. And the obvious difference is you can't modify a static guide once it's been scanned and manufactured, whereas you can certainly do it here on Navident, which has always been the beauty of Navident in regard to implants. Now it's being you know, given into endo. And obviously that is essential because you're using real-time feedback. You can change your plan on the fly. And that's just something you can't do with a prefabricated stent. And that's always what's been, you know, that and the real-time feedback has been really the most impressive part of the technology. Right, so what you're using here is you're, you could use your, uh, your regular drill or you could use a piezo. Um, and this is to do uh, the apico here. So this is just the line that you're gonna be cutting along. Uh, we guide the piezo quite nicely on the screen, which I'll demonstrate a little bit later. Um, and then what you're also looking at, obviously this is a true jaw model, uh, but with this true jaw model, we've got uh, endodontic access canals. So this is basically creating uh, the direct access to the canal, uh, to the calcified, and we can change that, move it um, however you like, make it deeper or, or uh, more superficial. We can change its position in any one of these different uh, CBCT scan uh, reflections down here on the bottom. I think so, the key here though, I'm sorry for interrupting. The fact that it's a true jaw, there's one reason for that. You only have an honorary DDS. You're not an official DDS. Exactly, and, and we, <laughs> we also, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna put a patient in our office here. I don't have, uh, I don't have the, uh, the protocol set up for that, so. Yeah. Yeah, so what we've also got, um, so unique to us, I guess, is that we, we're going to be able to um, guide the piezo. As I mentioned, we guide the high speed uh, as well as the low speed for, uh, for regular implants. And another advantage in that a lot of, I know a lot of the, the endodontists have the small field of view CBCT, and it's hard for us to get our registration on that in some points. 
Um, so we've developed something called the Navi Byte, uh, which is a, a built-in fiducial, just use some registration material, uh, bite this and take the scan with this in position. And then we can register the patient uh, immediately. So it literally takes uh, two minutes to register the patient. And then we can go ahead with our plan and proceed with surgery. So I can demonstrate that registration now. Again, this is uh, the Navi Byte that I'm talking about. You can see it in the, in the screen in the top left corner. Uh, it's just a uh, peak material with uh, some oh, screws on it. Yeah. Yeah. So that is in the patient right now. I'm just going to take my tracer tool and my calibrator tool to show it to the screen. And now the system knows where the tip of. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this Navi bite. The, the purpose for this Navi bite is if there are a lot of metal art, metal artifacts and there aren't enough teeth to actually do the tracing to register, then we register with the Navi bite in the mouth and it's got seven screws that the software automatically recognizes. So then all I have to do is take the tip of my tracer tool and I touch those screws where the camera can see and they're automatically registered one at a time. Okay, so I've done two of them. And then the last. Okay, there we go. So now the patient is registered. And what that means is the black and white pattern on my tools, mm -hmm. my tracer tool here, and the black and white pattern on the patient are being tracked by the camera mm -hmm. and they see where everything is. So if we're looking at these screens, there is a circle touching the anterior aspect of the tooth. Um, I can then put that on the incisal ledge and it shows in the same way. So I know that I'm extremely accurate and that's very, very important that we check accuracy of the registration before we go ahead with any calibration of any instruments. So we'll start off with the calcified canal. And what I'll do is, again, I'll take my register, my uh, calibrator tool and I'll calibrate the axis of the canal. Of the drill. So this is where everything turns. Uh, the axis, sorry, of the of the drill. So this is where everything turns from. You only do that once during a procedure. And then the next thing you're going to do is there's a little dimple in the in the top in the center, and we place that in, and we calibrate the length of the drill so we know exactly where the tip is. Okay. Once again, when that's complete. We're going to go ahead and we're going to touch these teeth and we're going to make sure that we're very, very accurate. That we're touching exactly where it says we're touching. Okay. And then once I've finished with that, I can approach an area where we've got a planned osteotomy. And my guidance target comes up. So the guidance target is on the bottom left. You can see my drill is right now. I want to get it right in the center so that I am looking essentially down the barrel of the drill. And I drill exactly where I want to. Now, again, I don't have the drill hooked up um, and I am not a dentist. So, but what you wanna see before you start drilling is something like this. So the numbers in the top left, I'm 0 0.2 millimeters away from the uh, center of my target, 0 0.1 now. My angulation is 0 0.1 degrees. And then the next number, 6.9, 6.8, that's my countdown to my depth. So that counts down and then a little progress bar happens on the left as well. And I go ahead and drill the calcified canal. That, that's really cool. I'm sorry for interrupting, but you see the, the whole point is an end to is it's a heads up display because you're always, it's like, it's like watching anything. You're seeing where you are in three different horizontal, vertical and the depth, which is incredible for an end to That's crucial. Yeah, and they're watching it as they go. And obviously, exactly. you know, some people are switching back and forth between the microscope, especially at the beginning as they get very close to the entrance uh, of the canal. But uh, 
it can be done when you trust the machine and you've done accuracy checks after you calibrate each drill, right. uh, you know, it, it can be done without uh, any other instrumentation. Right. Uh, the other thing that, uh, that is really unique to what we do is that we can also guide uh, the piezo tool. Yeah. So if I'm going to guide the piezo for a saw cut, I just switch to uh, saw calibration and my calibrator tool has a little channel in it to calibrate the saw and when I hold that in the right place. So from a standpoint of presentation, this is excellent. It's great. Yeah. So now I've just switched it up a little bit. So you've got the 3D view as well. Right. Well, wow. and there you can see with the 3D view that I'm right where I need to be. So I can watch that for lining things up initially and I'm getting a lot of information. Yep. And then what I can also look at is uh, the other two views, so the, the cross section and then the tangent view of that cross section. And I, again, as I said, I'm not cutting too far in right here. I've just got a little channel built. I can't go any further because I don't have the piezo hooked up. But you can see how that can be extremely helpful in guiding you uh, along your path while you do that. So the thing that always caught my attention with this is that you don't have to worry about how bulky the guide is. So not only the patient doesn't feel like they're being exploded, and that was what made this so simple. You just you could slip the head of the piezo in, regardless of how big or small the mouth was. It it you didn't need this sort of chunk of acrylic sitting in there, which exactly. because, which because you didn't have the pins can move, right? It's not like putting in an implant stent where you have the the what do they call them the locator pins or the locking pins or whatever. Right. You don't do that in endodontics, so the risk factor is still there that's going to shift on you. Now, if you're doing if you're doing registration and you have a larger field of view, or if you're doing registration and, and you have uh, three consecutive teeth that don't have metal artifacts, then you don't need to use this Navi bite that I mentioned. So you don't need to do any special scan. Right. Um, and so, um, and even once I've done that registration, you can see in the top left, I'm taking the Navi bite out now. Mm -hmm. So this is what I use to register. Yeah. But I've now taken it out of the mouth, and I go back. able to go there's absolutely nothing in the patient's mouth whatsoever well and i'm performing guidance and yeah there's nothing in the patient's mouth at all uh there's not even a tracker because we're using the head tracker here which is just yep. a device that's worn over the years and on top of the head yep. so it's been really exciting I mean, the seven papers that have come out in the last uh 14 months uh, really spurred us on to do a lot of things. Um, so while we feel we have a nice comprehensive uh, offering for Endodontist now, we're going to be building on this platform and we're going to include um, everything from decision making, uh, and uh, different types of navigation, uh, potentially with uh, curved navigation as well. So for files and then assessment of, uh, of the accuracy and uh, the success of your treatment afterwards by measuring different uh, volumetric, uh, the volume of, of the two structure left and uh, the volume of the lesion that you've taken out. This is so cool, Jason. I mean, we started doing this a couple of years ago and this is now light years ahead. You guys have really kind of kicked in and it's now dedicated to endo, which makes this so cool. Yeah, this is absolutely. great. Absolutely. So, I mean, thank you for doing this. Uh, really, well, looking for, Paula is always just phenomenal to watch. Uh, Felipe is doing awesome things with auto transplantation. Uh, Niraj and Bobby and uh, Samir, these guys are sort of like at the forefront. Bobby, certainly, he was there day one. Bobby was yeah. there day one, absolutely. And yeah. uh, he's been really instrumental. He's constantly uh, peppering us with different ideas for how to make yeah. it better currently. And uh, yeah, we're, we're thrilled. We're really happy with Niraj and, and Samir and, and uh, Felipe and, and obviously uh, Paula's Oh, she's amazing. Uh, doing every microsurgery with this. She's uh, she's the world record holder for uh, navigating <laughs> uh, microsurgery. Well, she's pro I mean, Gianluca Gambarini must be, they got a contest going on, right? Gian Gianluca's publishing like crazy. I love it. And he is. He yeah. is. And he's, he, he's, he's huge too. And he was the first person to publish yep. actually on, uh, on Navigated with, with Dynamic. And he's done a few now. Uh, and each one is, uh, each one is more advanced as we get more advanced as well. Yeah, he's something else. So listen, I want to thank you for doing this. This is a good way to get started because now everybody hits the ground running on February the 6th and 7th. And as always, good to see you. Congratulations on the forthcoming baby. And from what yeah. I see of Sebastian, he's just a house on fire. 
He's got he's a going concern, man. Just a going yeah. concern. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Webinars and publications and babies. A lot of uh, good things came out. A lot on. of good things in 2021. Yeah, Thank God. Thank God. It's about <laughs> time. It's about time. Jason, thanks again. And uh, I really appreciate this. And we shall be in touch. I'll see you on the 6th and the 7th. Thank you, Ken. Yeah, I'll be, on the, be there on the 6th and the 7th. Thanks, everybody.